What is going on, everyone? Hope you're all doing well, and welcome to RTX 4080 Founders Edition Review Day. That's right, folks, the day is finally here. We took a look at the RTX 4090 last month, but today we're going to be finally getting a look at the RTX 4080 12 gigabyte graphics card. Wait, did I say 12 gigabytes? I meant 16 gigabytes. Oh, yes. This one's actually launching, folks. So we'll be taking a look at the Founders card today. Uh, like I said, 16 gigabytes of video memory. This one's got a fair amount fewer CUDA cores than the RTX 4090 at 9,728 versus the 16,384 of the RTX 4090. And when I got this card, I was actually really surprised. I, I don't remember if this was mentioned at all in the announcements or since then, but the for the Founders card at least, it is the same exact cooler as the RTX 4090. I thought this would be a slimmer design, you know, something similar to like the 3080, 3080 Ti, sort of a dual slot card, but no. This is the full triple slot chonker, and looking at these boys side by side, they are identical. Identical. Which is absolutely fine by me. I have not had any trouble fitting either one of these cards into my mid tower, into my mid tower case, although I know that is a concern for a lot of other people out there, so Definitely do your due diligence on checking measurements for your for your enclosure where you're going to be putting one of these Founders cards if that's what you happen to be um, picking up. But honestly, so far, the coolers on these have been exceptional, very quiet. They run the cards cool. And when it comes to the way they look, I think they're just gorgeous as a Raider fan. Silver and black, that aluminum uh, enclosure and everything. I just think they look great. I mean, then look at this then. I can't imagine a more beautiful thing. And of course, another hot topic uh, with these cards has been, you know, the, the 12 VHPWR power connector, which is making a triumphant return here for the RTX 4080. Although this one has a three uh, eight pin lead versus the four eight pin lead that we saw on the RTX 4090. So hopefully we won't see any melting issues with the RTX 4080 as it's not going to be drawing as much power as the RTX 4090. So if heat was the issue and not, you know, how the thing was seated or anything like that. Still though, having less power, I, th I would hope would help with uh, some of these melting issues or if NVIDIA in the background has maybe ironed out some of the kinks with the uh, first run of the 12 uh, VHPWR power connectors. I have been running the 4090 24 hours a day since launch, even before launch actually, and I have not had any issues with my cable thus far. It's not to say that they're not happening, I just haven't experienced it. So for game testing today with the RTX 4080, I'm going to be comparing it against the RTX 4090 primarily, as I feel like people that are in the market for a new card are going to be wanting to decide whether or not it's worth spending the, the extra $400 roughly, you know, depending on which card you pick out and all that stuff. The prices can vary there a little bit. Um, but if you're trying to make a decision between 4080 or 4090, that $400 price gap, is it worth spending the extra $400? And I've also got my former RTX 3080 Ti Founders Edition card in testing here. No AMD cards uh, shown here in this video because we're still waiting for the XTX and the XT to come out in December, which is very unfortunate. That's sort of why this is sort of like a, a review, almost like in limbo right now, or consumers in limbo trying to make a purchase decision. So we're going to have this data here today, but... If you're trying to choose, if you're trying to choose between the 4090 and 4080, that'll help you out. But if you're trying to make a decision between this and the upcoming AMD cards coming out next month that I saw in Vegas a couple weeks ago, then you're going to have to wait to really make that decision until mid-December, which very close to the holidays. Kind of a tough call to make on whether or not it's worth waiting at that point. It's just going to have to be uh, a personal decision on your own. But we've got the data here today for these cards testing at 4K as well as 1440p, still on my 9900K as I'm waiting for some new parts to come in uh, for a 7950X build, so stay tuned for that. Should have that up and running by the time we get to the new AMD cards in December, and of course I'll be rerunning all the data on these cards for that comparison, so definitely be on the lookout for that in December. That's going to be some awesome content and really going to help people refine their decisions on which graphics card that they want to pick up this year. But without further ado, let's jump in and talk about some gaming benchmarks here. I do want to start off just taking a look at a couple of synthetics, and of course I've got a, a good library of games that I tested as well. Um, but the new 3D Mark Speedway test, I wanted to take a look at that as it's a new one, as well as Port Royal as it stresses ray tracing and very, very taxing. But I like taking a look at these synthetics because it does give us a good baseline of what just the pure performance of these cards is 
when in a strictly GPU bound situation, as this is graphic score, we're not looking at CPU here or anything. They're not very CPU intensive benchmarks. So it's really not gonna have a major impact. And it'll give us, like I said, just give us a good baseline of what kind of performance we can expect from one car to the other moving forward. So on the 3D Mark Speedway test, the RTX 4080 managed to pull in a score of 6763. The former 3080 Ti got 5720 while the RTX 4090 sitting top of the class, stout and steady and ready at 92.45. So this is painting the picture going forward, folks, between these three cards and the, you know, the top SKUs from NVIDIA. The 4090 is literally in a class of its own, at least for now. I do expect at some point we will see an RTX 4080 Ti, which will slot somewhere in the middle there. So, because we have a very big gap when it comes to the CUDA core counts between the 4090 and the 4080. So not too much of a surprise here that the 4090 has a significant lead over the RTX 4080. And that is the case here as well with the 3 d Mark Port Royal ray tracing test where the 4090 pulled in a score of 24,170 while the RTX 4080 got 17,055 and 3080 Ti pulling up the back of the pack with 12,465. But of course, most of you aren't here to look at synthetic tests. You wanna know how these cards are gonna run some of your favorite games here, but I do think that those do give us a good baseline here of the, just the raw power of the cards. But let's get into the 4K tests utilizing ray tracing and DLSS on quality. For every single game tested here and every single graphics card, settings were identical. Identical. Which is to say the max settings, ray tracing on DLSS quality, all that good stuff, wanting to sort of like test these cards and see all the technology coming out, all the power that they can harness and the best performance that we can get out of them. Of course, you could run DLSS and performance, but I honestly never choose to go below DLSS quality. And I, I, that's, that's just how I like to test it, honestly. So taking a look in here, we do have some odd outliers, uh, honestly, staring at you, Guardians of the Galaxy, with the 4080 somehow beating the 4090. Odd, triple check that. All settings were identical. <laughs> But starting off on the left here, we'll take a look at Cyberpunk 2077. This is everything just maxed. I don't have like the insane SSR on or anything like that. Just like the Ultra Pre, the RT Ultra uh, preset more or less with motion blur and stuff disabled because motion blur is hideous and no one should ever use it. Uh, the, R the 3080 Ti pulling up the rear with 41 average FPS, 50 on the 4080 and 68 on the 4090. And this will be a repeating thing here as the uh, 4090 does stand in a class of its own. It's significantly faster than the RTX 4080, which is why my final conclusion on this is, it, it, it sort of draw, drove home, like people were saying like, oh, it's a good value for $1,600, which is hard to say with a straight face, but it kind of is when you look at what else is out there. 128 FPS on God of War versus 98 on the RTX 4080 and 73 on the 3080 Ti. So the 4080 looking like a decent improvement over the 3080 Ti. I'm not to say that you would want to go out and replace a 3080 Ti with an RTX 4080, as it's still a very, very solid card uh, here in 2022. But, you know, some people like to be on the bleeding edge, but if you want to be on the bleeding edge, I'd say go 4090. Horizon Zero Dawn was a lot tighter, and I do believe that was because this is like one of those titles that's a little bit more CPU bound, with 152 average FPS on the 4090 and 143 on the 4080. As I mentioned, Guardians of the Galaxy was a weird outlier uh, where the 4080 got higher FPS than the RTX 4090. That was a bit odd. Uh, could be a driver issue, maybe something like that. I don't know, maybe something's going on in the driver that's making Guardians of the Galaxy just run faster than a 4080 for some reason. Metro Exodus, that one was very tight. Uh, again, it could be a CPU bound issue uh, or just maybe a limitation of the game engine, but the 4090 only won by three FPS here, but all three cards doing very well. Um, in, in Metro Exodus here. Modern Warfare 2, this was like, I thought like, other than like God of War was like, I feel like the most telling benchmark of all of them as the performance scaled like pretty perfectly as you would expect uh, between these. The 3080 Ti does, and I played Modern Warfare 2 on the 3080 Ti, maxed out at 4K quite a bit. And yeah, it struggles to maintain a solid 60 frames per second without lowering some options. Uh, and then for the 4080 got 90 FPS while 
the 49, you got 120 FPS. And it's worth noting that this one titled Modern Warfare 2 does not have, uh, doesn't have ray tracing and stuff. So this is just, you know, the way that the game is just purely running uh, out of the box at max settings. So that's worth noting for Modern Warfare 2, but everything else did have ray tracing. Forgot to mention that there at the start of the graph. Uh, Watch Dogs Legion, 69 on the 4090 versus 64 on the 4080, both making the game extremely playable over 60 frames, while the 3080 Ti is going to struggle a bit. And that very likely could be down to the rasterization performance, but also ray tracing. We've got a lot more RT cores here on this generation of cards, so that's definitely worth something, something worth considering. And I'll go ahead and throw up the 1% low numbers now here as well, if you guys want to pause and go and check those out, but I'm not going to go over every single number on all of these graphs. I like to focus on the 4K primarily, um, because that's I feel like that's just where gaming's at right now. I feel like we're really starting to push 4K. Uh, but for 1440p, again, that's, some people will be interested in these cards. 1440p is starting to push that higher refresh rate more and more, especially in some esports and competitive titles like Modern Warfare 2. So if you're looking to play on a, like a 1440-240 hertz monitor, uh, you know, Modern Warfare 2, you're going to have to lower some options. But again, if you're a competitive player, you're probably going to do that anyway if you're really looking to do that. If you're the type of crazy animal that's going to go out and buy a $1,600 card to play games on low, so that you can play it like 1440, 360 hertz or, or whatever. Uh, there's people out there that do it. They don't, they, they do exist. I believe they exist. Um, so yeah, Modern Warfare 2, 187 at 1440p. So if you're still on, if you're on like a 1440, 165 hertz or 144 hertz still, um, you're going to be absolutely fine in this game. You're going to be crushing it on the 4090 or the 4080. 4080 got 150 there. Uh, and then we've got the rest of our games here, Cyberpunk, 86 on the uh, RTX 4080, very respectable, playing that 1440 maxed out. How could you really complain about that if you're a 1440p gamer? God of War also ran incredible, over 100 FPS on all of these cards that I tested here. And then Horizon Zero Dawn, that was another outlier, sort of like we saw with Guardians of the Galaxy uh, in the 4K tests. But again, this was like, I believe, again, I think it's a CPU bound issue there and maybe something with the driver, the benchmark. But Horizon Zero Dawn ended up actually getting faster on the 48 than it did on the on the 4090 here. So those are all of our 1440p numbers at the average. And I'll go ahead and put up the 1% low. Again, if you guys want to pause and check those out, nothing really too alarming that really stood out for me in the 1% lows or anything. The RTX 4080 only had 1% lows below 60 uh, in two titles here, Metro Exodus and Watch Dogs Legion, but Watch Dogs Legion has always had some big frame drops and stuff here or there, so it's not like the most perfectly optimized game, so take it for what it is, and Metro Exodus, with their benchmark, there's like one sequence of it right at the end that just gets ridiculously taxing uh, right near the lake, and I always see the frames come down on that game. So there you go, that's all of the gaming benchmarks uh, that I did here on the 4090, 4080, and 3080 Ti. I hope this helped you guys make a purchase decision if you were trying to choose between the 4080 and the 4090. Like I said at the start, we don't have the new AMD cards yet, so it's going to be kind of hard for people that are trying to choose between red and green team. Uh, at this point in time, we're still just a few weeks away from being able to take a look at that information, but we'll definitely will be uh, once those cards become available. I, I chose not to delve too much any, into DLSS 3 um, with the testing here on this, as I feel like that was covered exhaustively at the launch of the RTX 4090. Uh, it's an extremely impressive piece of technology. I know it's a little bit controversial. Some people have their opinions about it, negative, positive, whatever. I'm personally of the opinion that I think it's a great feature to have. And if it's something that you need to utilize to get the best performance possible, get the higher, smoother frame rate, even if it does introduce a little bit of latency, it's not really that big of a deal. I think it's incredible. I've talked about it on Spider-Man when it came out. I'm blown away by DLSS 3. I think it's fantastic. And for games that I'm struggling to, you know, hit a high frame rate on, I'm more likely to throw on frame generation than I am DLSS in those particular circumstances because I just feel like it's less of a cheat or less of a hack, but that's just like a personal subjective opinion. I know there's going to be people that feel the exact opposite. And, uh, you know, it's like I said, it's subjective. It's your personal opinion, but I would opt to use DLSS frame generation over DLSS itself. Uh, so yeah, that's, like I said, that's my opinion, but didn't want to cover it exhaustively here with the 4080 cause it's all pretty much the same as with 4090. If you whack it on your frame rate's going to double in pretty much any game that has it available. So if you need that extra boost, it's there, whack it on. 
Um, so there's a lot of good features here. We'll get into more of this stuff when I think when the AMD cards come out. Um, you know, some of the features that one has versus the other, but when just we're just talking about an NVIDIA launch where there's no direct competitor right now, it's sort of hard to compare some of these things. Uh, you know, the AMD cards are going to have FSR 3, but they're not going to have it at launch. I think that's a big negative, honestly, for the launch of these cards. They should have had it ready for 2022, and it's going to come out sometime next year. Who knows when? But my big conclusion for between the 4080 and the 4090, is it worth picking up a 4080? Honestly, if I'm in the camp of, like, I'm willing to spend... $1,200 on a graphics card. Um, if anything, this review has just decided for me that I'm going to spend the extra $400 and get an RTX 4090. It is that much more impressive. It costs roughly 25% more. You're getting roughly 33% more performance, 50% more VRAM, and like I said, only at like a 25% higher price. Yeah, it's $1,600. It's a lot of money, but so is $1,200. So if you're in this enthusiast class, I would say try to reach and get that 4090, especially when uh, some of the board partner cards I've already seen, like an Asus Strix 4080, selling for $1,550. I'm like, why would anyone in their right mind buy that when they can get a 4090 Founders card for $1,600? Again, availability is going to be a huge factor. You still can't really find 4090s unless you go on eBay or something, but they're not selling for like extreme amounts over MSRP. It's not to say that you should overpay um, for these cards, but people do and they will. Uh, so it's going to, uh, availability could be a huge factor if you're trying to find these at, you know, retail prices or if you're buying in the aftermarket, there's going to be a lot of factors that come into play there, which I can't really anticipate exactly what those are going to be. So we can only really talk about what we have, which is the MSRP 1600 versus 1200. And if it's me, if I'm making a purchase decision at that, if I'm spending that much money, $400 more isn't really that wouldn't be that big of a deal to me and I would just say you know what if it's that much faster I'd rather get it so that it can last me a little bit longer um, and especially if you're trying to get if you're doing 4k gaming you're going to want the most performance you can get for your money so I would go 4090 honestly between these two cards but this is just like you know this is green versus green we're comparing apples to apples here it's it's sort of a sort of a tough review in limbo, as I said. We really got to wait and see what the AMD cards are going to do next month. But hopefully, this guy's helped. This helped you guys out a little bit if you're trying to decide between these two particular cards. And then also, you know, a case could be made to go find a, a 3090 Ti. You could find 3090 Ti's with the 24 gigs of VRAM for a thousand bucks or less, new and used. So those are available on the market pretty readily right now. So. Uh, yeah, that's a thing that exists. You can totally go grab one of those, and that might be a wise decision for some people not wanting to make the jump here. Um, but, you know, you're not getting frame generation, although they might add it in a later point. It's possible. But right now, uh, this is all the data that I've got for you guys. So I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. Hopefully uh, this, like I said, hopefully it helped you. I got to go rest, though. I've actually been battling a case of pneumonia. It took me like 45 minutes to record this because I keep on having to stop and cough, like right now. <coughs> But it's been a tough week battling uh, pneumonia and stuff like that and trying to hit this deadline, get everything done and record. Like testing wasn't an issue, but uh, recording and speaking on camera has been hard, which is why I haven't done a single video since um, the one video that I did coming back for after I got back from Vegas. I did one video, and since then I've not uploaded in, I think, a week from today. It was a week ago today that at last time I uploaded. So I'm going to go get some rest. Hopefully you guys have a fantastic day, and I will catch you in the next video. Peace.